Good afternoon, everybody. It's Dr. Galvin with today's coronavirus update. For those of you just joining us, my name is Dr. Jeffrey Galvin. I'm a board certified emergency medicine and obesity medicine uh, doctor here in Charlotte, North Carolina. I do a daily update about the coronavirus and uh, ultimately we're gonna do some things about wellness as well. We normally start out with some information about the virus, typically starting with the numbers, today's numbers. We've crossed the 5 million uh, uh, mark across the world with 5 million confirmed cases of COVID-19. We've had 382,000 deaths worldwide, 1.9 million recoveries. Here in the U.S., 1.58 million cases, 94,000 deaths, 301,000 recoveries. In our state of North Carolina, 20,900 cases, 716 deaths. Updates on the news today. The CDC's come out with some uh, updated recommendations or guidelines about being able to pick up the coronavirus from surfaces. They backed off a little bit about, uh, about their guidance about whether or not you can con contract the virus from surfaces. They've really kind of said, you know, it's much less likely that you're going to con contract the virus from touching surfaces. I've been a little skeptical about that for a while. There were some laboratory studies that said the viruses could live on surfaces for a long time. I thought it was highly unlikely, and I've cautioned against washing groceries, you know, packaging and uh, deliveries and things like that for some time. And the CDC's now come, off, come back and said, you probably don't need to do that. The majority of transmission is from aerosolized droplets, respiratory droplets, you know, Transmission is primarily from person to person, people who are less than six feet apart, from coughing, speaking, and things like that. Now, surface contact in hospital settings is, is a much bigger deal, but mainly transmission seems to be from people in close proximity, typically coughing and speaking, yelling, breathing hard. Uh, those are things that are, are going to pri primarily drive transmission. Also in sort of coronavirus news, there were some interesting studies that came out of Beth Israel Deaconess Hospital, two studies that were released that give us some, uh, some good news about uh, potential immunity. One of the questions is if we get the virus, are we gonna subsequently de develop immunity and be you know, protected from subsequent in infection? And there were two peer reviewed papers that were released that were done, granted on monkeys, but rhesus monkeys, are very similar genetically to humans. And a uh, uh, single lab released two different studies that were published in Science, I believe, today. And one of them looked at nine monkeys that were infected with COVID-19, developed infection, got sick, and then subsequently recovered. And after recovery, were re-exposed to the virus, attempted to be reinfected, and were given a big dose of virus again, and none of the nine monkeys were able to be reinfected. So they were immune to becoming reinfected. None of them got sick again. So that shows that infection to the virus conferred immunity to these monkeys from getting infected again. And in the second study that this lab did, they took 35 monkeys and immunized 25 of them with a vaccine that was demonstrated to produce antibodies against the virus. And then subsequently, the, and so 25 of the monkeys were immunized, 10 of them were not. And then subsequently, they were all exposed to the virus again. The 25 monkeys that were immunized showed that they developed antibodies and then they subsequently did not develop a significant amount of virus uh, infection when they got exposed. And the 10 monkeys that did not get immunized develop significant amounts of virus in their lungs. So it looks like that virus, A, produced an antibody response, and that antibody response protected those monkeys from getting significant amounts of virus produced in their lungs. So it looks like that virus actually protected those monkeys, or rather the antibodies produced by the vaccine protected those monkeys from getting infected. So it looks like that virus um, vaccine actually was effective. So those are two good, you know, two pieces of good news about immunity um, potential against the virus. So, um, you know, some good news on the horizon potentially for a vaccine and good news for people that get infected for potentially staying uh, immune. 
we've seen some, you know, some case reports of people potentially getting secondary infections. And, but we have, yeah, you know, we've, like I said, 1.9 um, million uh, recoveries worldwide. We have not seen widespread reports of people getting secondary infections um, after they recovered from the virus. So that's good news. I try to occasionally debunk uh, things that are going around the internet about the virus. And I want to talk about this myth that's going around the people that get uh, immunized against the flu are going to test positive for COVID-19. That is completely false. And this is why. When we test people for COVID-19, we are typically doing a PCR test. And that is looking for virus fragments, again, you know, pieces of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And we're amplifying those fragments and we're looking for these particular pieces of the virus. When we immunize people against um, influenza A and B, we're using influenza virus. And influenza and SARS-CoV-2 are two completely different viruses. They are not cross-reactive. And so if you have antibodies against influenza A and B, they are not going to show up as SARS-CoV-2. They're completely different things. So any antibodies you might have against influenza are not going to show up on a PCR test against SARS-CoV-2. So you will not test positive for COVID-19 if you've been immunized against influenza. So it, it's a complete falsehood. It's just a internet falsehood. Uh, I am gonna cut it off here. I am working unexpectedly in the emergency department tonight, and that is because John Bream, who was supposed to be on our Facebook Live last night and blew us off because apparently his wife, Jennifer, decided that last night was a convenient time for them to have their first child. She went into labor, and they delivered a healthy baby boy last night, so congratulations to John and Jennifer. And John was supposed to work in the emergency department the night shift tonight and apparently wants to spend time with his new child and his wife. So I've agreed to work his night shift tonight. So I'll be working tonight. I'll try to give you all a, a, a post ER shift update tomorrow morning. Congratulations to John and Jennifer and the new baby. We're very excited for them. And so I'll cover for John tonight to give him a little uh, alone time with his new family. Congratulations to them, them and uh, that's a, we're really excited for them. It's their first child. So uh, anyway, I will uh, sign off for here. Wash your hands, take care of yourselves, look after your families, look out for everybody else. I'll be back tomorrow with a post ER shift uh, update. I'm actually working a bunch the next two weekends. I think I work almost the whole weekend. I think I work Saturday, Sunday, Monday night this weekend. And I think I work Saturday and Sunday or Sunday, Monday next weekend too. So lots of uh, updates from the ER over the next couple of weeks. Stay safe. I'll talk to you in the morning. Good night.